Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, Sonia Kilji. I have a really good friend that I met through TikTok um, here with me today. Her name is Asumi J, and she has the coolest life story, the coolest background ever. And so I had to bring her onto my YouTube channel. She just launched a brand, alphajuliet.com. Um, it is a clothing line. It's absolutely insane. I got onto it and I ordered as soon as I found out that she launched it. I was on her even before she launched it. So please help me welcome Asumi J. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well I am, listen, you have, and I keep telling you this, one of the coolest life stories that I personally know of and am super inspired by, especially your background in, in your cultural background, not only just your family's heritage, but also so much of the travels you've done and the life that you've lived. So could you share just a little bit about that with us? All right, so, um, well, Canadian born and raised, um, I've always had that identity crisis, you know, growing up in the West, trying to figure out what my ethnic and cultural background is um, and diving into that. So my parents are North African. I'm from the Amaziri or Berber tribes. Um, my I was raised by a Palestinian stepfather, so I've pretty much lived in Canada, Europe, North Africa, the Middle East as well. Um, I've lived in Pakistan, um, Bangladesh for a little time as well. And um, it's just, it's just, oh, sorry, one second. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just been um, incredible traveling, learning about different cultures. And honestly, you know, growing up in Canada, um, I wasn't really exposed to so many different um, ethnic backgrounds in my community. Uh, and so um, my journey, actually, my fashion journey began recently uh, when I would look at the ethnic clothing in Pakistan, how similar it was uh, to the clothing uh, and the traditional outfits in the Berber or Amaziri North African attire. So, for example, that the Pashtuns in North Africa, um, in North of Pakistan, they, they have this, uh, it's derived from the Kochi tribes of Afghanistan. And with the tribal tattoos, with the jewelry, with the headpieces, it is very similar to the Amaziri tribes of uh, North uh, Africa. Uh, and so because of everything that I've seen, and as well, I've lived in the United Arab Emirates. So the UAE was just fascinating for me because it's technically an Arab culture, but they have similar like cultures from the countries around them. So from Iran, from Pakistan. So they would have something that would look like the Arabic kaftan. The kaftan is usually the long dress with the belt. So that's uh, mainly Arab and North African, but they also have this outfit that's quite similar to the Pakistani shalwar kameez. And same with the colors, the materials. So. <clears throat> When you might uh, look at the fashion towards South Asia and uh, the Gulf countries, they have very bright and vibrant colors. And I, I just love the whole aspect of ethnic clothing, things that are bright. And so I wanted to create something that had a Western touch to it so anyone can wear it, but also with different um, uh, ethnic pieces. And, you know, in, in a society or in the Western society where we basically have this whole concept of being way too politically correct or uh, cultural appropriation, what I learned from visiting those countries is that they want people to embrace their culture. They want people to show it off. They want people to wear it. And so I decided <clears throat> to create these uh, dresses. Um, some of them that you'll notice, they do have Western cuts. So for example, uh, the outfit that you ordered is a crop top with the asymmetrical style yet it has the eastern embroidery and the amazing thing is that I, each collection is going to be from a different country um, as well in my travels I spent some time doing humanitarian work so I sat with indigenous communities uh, from different camps around the world and then I saw that some people were actually in need of work for example some women wanted to be seamstresses but they had no supplies no work and so for in Pakistan for example the first collection is going to be supporting a community in Karachi Pakistan 
So proceeds from the first collection are going to be supporting that. Now the upcoming collection that's going to be coming hopefully in a few months, I'm very excited for this one. This is going to be coming from Tunisia. So it's going to be supporting the indigenous woman of uh, Tunisia or the Amaziri woman. Um, I've hired a few women from there as well. And you know, honestly with COVID and people having a hard time um, with getting jobs as well, the great thing about this is that we're not just paying them minimum wage in their currency, but as a Canadian currency, because I want to help empower these women. I want to be able to um, give back to the community because when you sit with these people in the camps or in the villages, you can't leave and just forget about them. And that was one thing that I honestly felt guilty. It's like, what more can I do? Giving food here and there it's a temporary solution, but giving people jobs and fair wages as well, which is really important. So I'm creating a brand, hopefully that people in the West can love and appreciate, not just in the West, all over the world. And the great thing about it is it looks at the similarities of all our ethnic cultures and it blends it together. So anyone can wear it. It's what I like to call ethnically ambiguous fashion or culturally ambiguous fashion. And honestly, the world's become a melting pot of different cultures and everything's just starting to blend. And I honestly think and hope and believe that that's the way the future is going to go instead of, you know, segregating and this is mine and this is mine. Let's actually celebrate each other. Let's empower each other. So it's a fashion, a, a brand, but with a good cause that's actually going to be supporting people in need. I hope people are hearing this because it's actually incredible the way that you're not like, oh, this is superior to this. If you're taking the best of all the different travels and all the different cultures that you've been part of, putting it together, and it's really a message of unity. It's a message of giving back and knowing more of your story. I mean, you have a background traveling. You have a background with humanitarian work. You have a background in the modeling industry, in modest modeling, and then just your life and your different cultures. And honestly, when I found out that you were doing this, it felt like such a crossroads of all the different journeys you've been on, and it made sense. And I didn't even know at that time how you were giving back to various communities, which makes this so much cooler. And also, you know, one thing that I thought of, which may not even cross your mind, is the amount of um, interracial marriages that are happening. And so, for example, let's say you're going to like an Arab Pakistani wedding, which is super common. A lot of my friends were, that are Arab marry Pakistanis and vice versa. Imagine being able to wear an outfit that is a reflection of both cultures. I mean, there's really not that much in the market in terms of fusion like that. So this is going to be absolutely incredible. Now, tell everyone again where they can find um, your collection. So uh, you can check the website asumij.com. I already have all the social media where you can view little snippets and uh, you can see how we style the outfits as well on Instagram and our Facebook page. So we've just launched, but everything's coming through slowly and uh, you can go ahead on the website, have a look, and it would be great to also sign up to the mailing list because that's when I'm gonna be sending out discounts just for the members and a sneak peek of the new collections before they come out to everyone in the public. Now, I know again that you have models, so you have a little bit of insight industry, insight experience as to like how the fashion world works. But talk to me about like the steps that you took to start this brand and kind of everything that went into launch, because I'm sure it was a very sizable project and also very time consuming and not easy. I mean, just from the, the design, the employment, the construction, making sure everything is good, the website development, and then the marketing and promotion, like all those various steps. Talk to me about how that journey was. So I've been planning this for a few years now. And with my designs, I've basically, wherever I see something, whether it be actually a piece or even just um, a certain design or a pattern or a color, I used to have my sketchbook and I would draw the design. Um, one of my favorite pieces, uh, you will see it's coming up this week. It's a turquoise piece that basically looks, um, like the, uh, it's a North African style vest, but with a crop top in the middle, which people can actually have a modest version or um, a Western version, uh, and then the skirt. So the style is North African 
with a Western cut, but the embroidery is actually from Pakistan. And there's instances where, for example, I'd just be walking around in the market in Pakistan or in Bangladesh, and I would just see the fabric and the material there. And I would fall in love with it. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I know this goes with my vision. And I would purchase all the material and, you know, take it back with me. Um, and honestly, it's it's uh, been in the making for a while. So looking, doing the research, looking at what is out there, how other brands are doing it, learning from other fashion designers as well, um, you know, taking inspiration from what I feel goes with my theme and my vision. And as you can see in the photography as well, even before hiring a, this photographer, uh, the photographer that I had, I found one that had the theme that I was going for. So for example, some might be a little bit more light and floral, but the photographer I chose was a little bit more contrast and bold. I wanted this theme or this collection to be known that it's going to be a bold collection, like very out there. And so um, and scouting it's, bold. That. it's very bold. That's what I loved about the pieces. In fact, the one that I ordered, the one that I fell in love with was the one that you modeled. And it's very, I've never worn anything like that. Um, it's definitely a tiny bit out of my comfort zone as well, too. Also, I've got a belly that's not super cute. <laughs> but um, I was like, you know what, this is just so, it's so bold. And you can see the boldness within the name Alpha Juliet. Anyway, so I want my the last question I really, really wanted to ask before I let you go is how you came up with that name and what that name meant to you. So years ago, years ago, I worked for this uh, marketing company and it was called Zulu Alpha Kilo. It made no sense to me, nothing. And I asked one of the workers there what the name of this company even means. They told me, well, the CEO, his name is Zach. And in the army letters, so Alpha, Beta, so on, his initials stand for Zulu Alpha Kilo. And I wondered, what would AJ stand for, Asumi J? I looked up AJ and I saw in the Alpha, um, or the army letters, it was Alpha Juliet. That spoke to me because I felt like that I could really resonate with the name. Alpha, an alpha female, is a female who's bold, who's brave, who's courageous, who's strong, who's determined. And Juliet is the feminine yet uh, intelligent, has, you know, some kind of wit, um, can be soft as well. And the name went perfectly together. And I'm like, every woman is an alpha Juliet, a bold yet sensitive, strong yet feminine, uh, brave yet intelligent. And so when the name came out, I had to register it. And I'm like, this is it. Everything has fallen into place. And, you know, with COVID hit, the time the timing was perfect. And yeah, I hope you you enjoy the the outfit as much as I had you know fun making it, and I know you're gonna make it look amazing. Oh my god, I I literally cannot wait. I cannot wait, and it's gonna. And the thing is, I am so supportive of everything that you touch because everything you touch, you turn to gold. And wow. again, this is I, just knowing you. The show I met you right at the start of COVID, but. It truly, hopefully you can't hear the old McDonald in the background. <laughs> Is that Lily? <laughs> That's my kid, yeah. <laughs> but I, I just keep it real. We just keep going on these Zooms. But I, again, I'm really proud of you. I think this is going to be the most phenomenal connection. You're the first interview I'm doing on YouTube. I want oh, to so interview, fun. and I want to continue to interview very strong women with really strong stories and especially women of various colors, various backgrounds, various ethnicities, and women who have very powerful stories. This, we just shared a shred of your story today. Your life is so incredible and so actually multifaceted and so layered that I'm sure I'll have you back on here one day to help mentor and talk to some of my audience. But thank you again for being here. And one thing after it's here, I will definitely be modeling it to the best of my ability. I'm not a professional model like you are. I'm a TikTok, I'm a TikToker. We'll make we'll make it fun. <laughs> And it's, it's just thank you for for your support. And honestly, I just can't wait to see it on you. And um, there's going to be a little surprise in there as well. So hopefully you like wait. it. Well, I had to show you this. <gasps> Lily. <laughs> She's so cute. But, 
All right. Thank you, everyone. Remember to hit subscribe, follow, check out Alpha Juliet, check out Asumi J. I'm going to be linking all of her links in the description of this video, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.